Okay, welcome back, Warrior. We are in the car and trying to record, t t trying to take advantage of the time that we are in here. And we tried to do like a mic and that wasn't working. It was too shaky of sound. And then we tried it without the mic and it's actually better, but now I probably sound more far away. And then I was going to try putting the phone on the dashboard, but then it was so shaky and I was like, okay, I think I could probably hold it a little bit better than that. So this is where we're at. This is how we're going to read it. We're going to read it with me holding it so I can get a nice hand cramp and arm cramp. And, you know, it's the things we do for our scripture reading. You know what I mean? Okay. So Helaman chapter 11. Oh, no, I don't have my... Let's see. I don't have a chapter summary for that. So today, no chapter summary for Helaman 11. No spoilers. We're just going to go into it. So verse 1, And now it came to pass in the seventy and second year of the reign of the judges that the contentions did increase insomuch that there were wars throughout all the land among all the people of Nephi. And it was this secret band of robbers who did carry on this work of destruction and wickedness. And this war did last all, the, all that year. And in the seventy and third year it did, last, it did also last. And it came to pass in, the, in this year... Nephi did cry unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, do not suffer that this people shall be destroyed by the sword. Okay, so he's, remember, he just got, he just got approval from the Lord that said, hey, whatever you want, I'm going to do, because you're usually always, you're just aligned with my will all the time. And so now Nephi's like, whoa, I better watch it. So he's trying to say, like, don't destroy the people yet you know so he says oh lord do not suffer that this people shall be destroyed by the sword but oh lord rather let there be a famine in the land to stir them up in remembrance of the lord their god and perhaps they will repent and turn unto thee so you know we appreciate nephi going with the famine versus the sword because it's always sad when people have to die Anyway, verse 5, and it was, and so it was done according to the words of Nephi. And there was a great famine upon the land among all the people of Nephi. And thus in the seventy and fourth year, the famine did continue, and the work of destruction did cease by the sword, but became sore by famine. So it's like a different work of destruction, right? So I think that's a little bit, I think that's a little bit better, a little bit more tolerable, uh, definitely something that would humble people in a way that would help, right? Um, okay, and then we have verse 6. And this work of destruction did also continue in the 70 and 5th year. For the earth was smitten that it was dry and did not yield forth grain in the season of grain. And the whole earth was smitten even among the Lamanites as well as among the Nephites. So that they were smitten that they did perish by the by thousands in the more wicked parts of the land. Okay, so remember how I said that the sword might be better, well, or might not be good because of so much death. Well, it looks like they were getting people who were really dying. So, I mean, I guess it just needed to happen, right? And verse 7, And it came to pass that the people saw that they were about to perish by famine, and they began to remember the Lord their God. It's about time, right? I bet that's what the Lord says about us. And they began to remember the words of Nephi. And the people began to plead with their chief judges and their leaders that they would say unto Nephi, Behold, we know that thou art a man of God, and therefore cry unto the Lord our God that he turn away from us this famine, lest all the words which thou hast spoken concerning our destruction be fulfilled. So now they want to say, now they finally admit that, oh, he is a prophet, and yeah, we should probably ask him to say prayers on our behalf so that we don't all die. So good job, good job, people wanting to now reach out to the prophet. So, and it, verse 9, And it came to pass that the judges did say unto Nephi, according to the words which had been desired, and it came to pass, okay, now I have to switch hands, and it came to pass that when Nephi saw that the people had repented and did humble themselves in sackcloth, he cried again unto the Lord, saying, O oh Lord, behold, this people repenteth, and they have swept away the band of Gadianton from amongst them, insomuch that they have become extinct, and they have concealed their secret plans in the earth. Now, O oh Lord, because of this their humility, wilt thou turn away thine anger, and let thine anger be appeased in the destruction of those wicked men whom thou hast already destroyed? O oh Lord, wilt thou turn away thine anger, yea, 
thy fierce anger and cause that this famine may cease in the land. O Lord, wilt thou hearken unto me and cause that it may be done according to my words and send forth rain upon the face of the earth that she may bring forth her fruit and her grain in the season of grain. O Lord, thou didst hearken unto my words when I said, let there be a famine that the pestilence of the sword might be might cease and I know that thou wilt even at this time hearken unto my words for thou saidest that if this people repent I will spare them yea O Lord and thou seest that they have repented because of the famine and the pestilence and destruction which has come unto them and now O Lord wilt thou turn away thine anger and try again if they will serve thee and oh and if so O Lord thou canst bless them according to thy words which thou hast said Okay, so I think I think this is really sweet, like the way Nephi is praying. Um, like, I don't believe that people really want people to die. And it seems like maybe even Nephi didn't realize there were going to be people dying. Because, you know, you don't necessarily think of people dying when you think of a famine. Like, you think, no, there's going to be like a drought of water. And we'll just like, you know, conserve water for like a few weeks and it'll be better, right? But then it seems like a lot of people died. And so he's like, wait, you know, maybe now you can cease the famine because all these people that were wicked, the Gadians and robbers, are all dead now. So is it cool? Like, it's fine, right? Like, we don't need to have more death. And so I think that's awesome that, like, maybe Nephi was like, oh, I didn't realize that people were going to die. And so he's, like, really pleading with the Lord to get, to get that rain to come so that no more people have to die. And, um, and, and I think just from like the length of the prayer, like, and probably there were more words, who knows, right? Like, we don't know exactly what happened, but, um, it just seems like, like, that's what it was. Like, Nephi was, was like, oh, I didn't think the Lord was going to really make this famine last that long that people were going to have to die. And then, so now he's like, really like, okay, but like, we can stop now, right? Is that okay? Like if we stop, because, 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 because this is on another level, kind of famine that he was not aware. Of. Although it would be weird to not be aware as a prophet of like what could happen, because, you know, he knows all the stories of like Moses and Abraham and, and Joseph and all those things. So you know, I think it's probably. I think sometimes maybe we don't. We, maybe we underestimate our. Um, I don't want to say like our power but like you know when we request things from the lord sometimes we ask for things and we don't realize that that's what we were asking for like oh you know i didn't know you were gonna listen to me like like that much right and and sometimes i think we surprise ourselves with even our relationship with the lord like you know and maybe nephi was surprised at his relationship with the lord too because i mean he literally asked the Lord for a famine and he gave it to him. And so, but so like, I don't know. I think, I think sometimes we can surprise ourselves with our own relationship with the Lord. And when we ask a blessing, we're like, whoa, 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 what was that? Like we asked for this, but we didn't know you were going to give us this. And sometimes it's like awesomer. And sometimes it's like not awesome at all because we weren't really specific or, you know, something like that. Does that make sense? Or maybe the, the, the answer to our prayer came like really late and we're like whoa we didn't even think that was going to happen but that's awesome that it did you know and so I don't know I think maybe I'm just elaborating too long but there's a quote from President George Q. Cannon and he says God delights in a people who are courageous and valiant who are not afraid he delights in people of this kind the greatest blessing almost that we read of that was ever given to a man in the flesh was given to a man possessed of this courage you will remember him doubtless when i mention his name his name was nephi he was the son of helaman and had a brother named lehi he was the grandfather of nephi who was uh the president of the 12 whom jesus chose on this continent read the life of that man and observe the blessings that god bestowed upon him god gave him great power because his because of his valor and fearlessness in his cause and it is so with every prophet and with every man of God whom we have any record 
And it is so with every people and generation who put their trust in the Lord and are valiant for his cause. He will give them He will give them great blessings and power. And he will bring them off victorious. He has done so in the past. He is doing so now. And he will do so in the future. And whenever you find a man or a people weakened and limber-backed, nervous, their hands shaking and their hearts trembling, you will find a people that have not very much of the strength and power of God with them. But when they are full of courage, zeal, and determination, God is with them. He strengthens them and gives them victory. He will do it every time with every individual. Oh man, that was good. End quote. Okay, so that was from the Journal of Discourses from President George Q. Cannon. Yep, and that's just like what I said, and he said it so much better. Okay, um, we're reading now verse 17. Okay, so we'll see what the Lord does here. It says, And it came to pass that in the 70th and 6th year the Lord did turn away his anger from the people and cause that rain should fall upon the earth insomuch that it did bring forth their fruit in the season of her fruit and it came to pass that it did bring forth her grain in the season of her grain and behold the people did rejoice and glorify God and the whole face of the land was filled with rejoicing and they did no more seek to destroy Nephi but they did esteem him as a great prophet and a man of God having great power and authority given unto him from God and so that's amazing that finally they're like, we asked the prophet to do something for us, and he did it, and it worked out for our good, right? And I think, I think so. That's like they were just experimenting, right? They were experimenting upon the word that he was a prophet, and so what? You know, they tested, they tested their faith, and it paid off, right? Um, and that's that's all that the Lord wants from, uh, from us is to just test the words that he says so that we can gain that experience and have that testimony strengthened with him. Um, so now they're all like, yes, this is a prophet of God. Awesome. And behold, and we have Flora over here. Okay, so we have Flora over here. Can you see her? She's over there. Say hi. <laughs> She wasn't saying anything until we started recording. Of course. That's how it works. Okay, so let's see. Verse 19. And behold, Lehi, his brother, was not a whit behind him as to things pertaining to righteousness. And thus it did come to pass that the people of Nephi began to prosper again in the land and began to build up their waste places and began to multiply and spread even until they did cover the whole face of the land, both on the northward and on the southward from the sea west to the sea east. Okay, see how that happens? It's like when they are keeping the commandments of the Lord, they grow and they progress and they expand. Those are like awesome things that happen. But when they are not keeping the commandments, they regress, they isolate, they kill, they deplete, they wear out. And I don't know, that like kind of... We can kind of align, like, liken that to our lives. Like, when are we progressing and when are we expanding and when are we um, growing versus when are we doing the opposite uh, in our lives? Like, what can we change to, like, make that better? Um, okay, and then we have verse 21. Oh, and when the thing paused, I said that this muscle right here is burning. And I said, this is the selfie muscle, and this muscle hurts right now, and if I do it on this side, same. <laughs> but this, we gotta give this one a break. So if, if you see me like going like this, and I have a muscle right there, you'll know why. Okay, and it came to pass that the 70 and 6th year did end in peace, and the 70 and 7th year began in peace. And the church did spread throughout the face of all the land, and the more part of the people, both the Nephites and the Lamanites, began, uh, did belong to the church and they did have exceedingly great peace in the land and thus ended the 70 and 7th year. So they're having really awesome times now. 
And also they did they had peace in the 70th and 8th year, save it were a few contentions concerning the points of doctrine. Why does it always come down to that, you know? Which had been laid down by the prophets. Why is that? Why do we always have to have issues with doctrine, you know? Okay, verse 23. And in the 70th and 9th year, there began to be much strife, but it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi and many of their brethren who knew concerning the true points of doctrine, having many re revelations daily, therefore they did preach unto the people in so much that they did put an end to their to their strife in that same year. Bless you. Okay, so points of doctrine, there's a quote here from President Henry B. Eyring. He says, now if Bless you. <laughs> okay, here's he says this. Now if you and I were visiting alone, I wish we could be, where you felt free to ask whatever you wanted to ask, I can imagine you're saying something like this. Oh brother Iring, I let I've felt some of the things you have described. Bless you. The Holy Ghost has touched my heart and mind from time to time, but I will need it cons consistently if I'm not to be overcome or deceived. Is that possible? Is it possible? And if it is, what will it take to receive that blessing? Do you want me to open the book? Oh. Did you get it? No. Here. <laughs> we got to open the garage. Oh, wait. Now I can't tell if I'm opening it. It's one of those weird <coughs> garages. Or maybe it's just one of those weird garage door openers. Ugh, the thing never opens. It's fine. Do you ever do that? Oh, I got it. Where you put it between your chin. Like, what is that? What is that? Like, why does it work when I put it on my chin? Okay, uh, we're totally in the middle of a quote. Hold on, where was I? <laughs> oh, okay. So... You will need the Holy Ghost constantly. Uh, uh, is it possible? And if it is, what will it take to receive that blessing? Okay, so we know where we're at. Well, let's start with the first part of your question. Yes, it is possible. Whenever I need that reassurance, and I need it from time to time too, I remember two brothers, Nephi and Lehi, uh, and the other servants of the Lord laboring with them faced fierce opposition. They were serving in an increasingly wicked world they had to deal with terrible deceptions, so I take courage, and so can you, from the words in this one verse of Helaman. The reassurance is tucked into the account of all that happened in an entire year, almost as if to the writer it was not surprising. Listen. Okay, so here we go. It says, and in the 70th and ninth year, there began to be much strife, but it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi and many of their brethren who knew concerning the true points of doctrine having many revelations daily, therefore did preach, did preach unto the people insomuch that they did put an end to their strife in that same year. They had many revelations daily. So for you and for me, that answer, that answers your first question. Yes, it is possible to have the companionship of the Holy Ghost sufficiently to have many revelations daily. It will not be easy but it is possible. Okay, but also he was like a prophet, right? So what it will require will be different for each person because we start from where we are in our unique set of experiences in life, end quote. Ooh, I love that so much. And that was from a BYU fireside, September 10th, October 2006. Um, and along that, one of my friends today in Relief Society, let's see if I can get the lights open. Nope. One of my friends in Relief Society, um, she said today that we, we were talking about um, testimony of Jesus Christ in our Relief Society lesson. And then um, we were supposed to be talking about Elder Kieran's talk in, from General Conference. But it's funny that we ended up talking about kind of similar things anyway. Anyway, so in my friend's comment talked about Jesus Christ and how our life, our lives are like, like, uh, likened, like as, I don't know if I could say it right. She, she said it better. Anyway, imagine 
being in an elevator and a lot of people get on different floors and you can get on and off but christ is the one that is pulling the elevator all the way to the top and you can get on and keep riding it all the way to the top or you can get off whenever you want and you come back um and you get off and you come back anyway she says that her professor said that you could have different people getting on at different at different floors or getting off at different floors. But as long as you keep getting back in the elevator, the Lord is bringing you to him, bringing you closer to him as you're going in this elevator. So the idea is stay in the elevator. Um, and it kind of require, it's kind of what he's saying right here. What it will require will be different for each person because we start from where we are in our unique set of experiences in life. And so we have different experiences and different gifts and talents and and uh circumstances and so we're all going to start at different levels and we're never going to be at the same level with somebody else and but the lord is trying to just get us to get to him and that is what that's what really matters and so if we can stay in the elevator he's going to bring us closer to him no matter what um no matter what we go through okay so we're on verse 24 so we're going to pause right there and we're pausing because we got to put Florida sleep and do all the bedtime routine things. So, and then we'll be back. Quite the adventure since I last chatted with you <laughs> and about scriptures. And yeah, that was last night. And I meant to come back and finish reading last night, but snuggling with little Miss takes longer than you think and I basically fell asleep for two hours and I was like well now it's actually bedtime so anyways the good news is I got some good sleep the bad news is we didn't catch up yesterday so <clears throat> that's how we're that's how we're working it today um also this thing keeps blinking it, it usually blinks right okay um so we're on verse 24. I do remember that. I know these blips are like the worst. So I can see how they use that in uh, in uh, Avengers. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we found it. it. Says, and it came to pass that in the 18th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were a certain number of the dissenters from the people of Nephi who had some years before gone over unto the Lamanites and taken upon themselves the name of Lamanites and also a certain number who were real descendants of the Lamanites being stirred up to anger by them by or by those dissenters. Therefore, they commenced war with their brethren. Okay, I, it's almost like you get tired of it. You know, you're just like, really, again? Ugh. Hold on. All right, so verse 25, and they did commit murder and plunder and then they would retreat back into the mountains and into the wilderness and secret places, hiding themselves that they could not be discovered, receiving daily an addition to their numbers inasmuch as there were dissenters that went forth unto them. And thus in time, yea, even in the space of not many years, they became an exceedingly great band of robbers. And they did search out all the secret plans of Gadianton and thus they became came robbers of Gadianton, literally again. Now behold, these robbers did make great havoc, yea, even great destruction among the people of Nephi and also among the people of the Lamanites. So this is the return of the Gadianton robbers. And it came to pass that it was expedient that there should be a stop put to this work of destruction. Therefore, they sent an army of strong men into the wilderness and upon the mountains to search out this band of robbers and to destroy them. Okay, so do you notice how, how like when they were being blessed and they prospered, they had time to do mischievous things, mischievous, 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 I feel like I don't know how to speak, uh, speak English, uh, mischievous things like they do things like robbing and like all the evil stuff. It's like when, when we're blessed, we start making bad choices. What is that about us? It's like, but when we're having a hard time, we don't have time to do bad stuff. We only have time to survive. Uh, yeah, pretty crazy, right? 
So the, there's people going out to destroy them, looking for them. And then verse 29, but behold, it came to pass that in the same year they were driven back even into their own lands, and thus ended the 18th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the commencement of the 8th, 80th and first year, they did, for, did go forth again against this band of robbers and did destroy many. Then they were also visited with much destruction. And they were again obliged to return out of the wilderness and out of the mountains unto their own lands because of the exceeding great greatness of the numbers of those robbers who invest, infested the mountains and the wilderness. And it came to pass that the, thus ended the, this year, and the robbers did still increase and wax strong, insomuch that they did defy the whole armies of the Nephites and also of the Lamanites. And they did cause great fear to come upon the people, upon all the face of the land. And now that's not cool. You know, when you're living in fear, not safe. That's, that's the worst, you know? Yea, for they did visit many parts of the land and did do great destruction unto them. Yea, did kill many and did carry away others captive into the wilderness. Yea, and more especially their women and their children. Uh, don't be messing. Um, <clears throat> now this great evil which came and unto the people because of their iniquity did stir them up against again in remembrance of the Lord their God. And thus ended the 80 and first year of the reign of the judges. And in the 80 and second year they began again to forget the Lord the, their God. And the 80 and third year, they began to wax strong in iniquity. And in the 80 and fourth year, they did not mend their ways. And it came to pass in the 80 and fifth year, they did wax stronger and stronger in the pride and in their wickedness. And thus they were re ripening again for destruction. And thus ended the 80 and fifth year. Isn't that wild? Like, how is that even possible? So during this time, there are some Nephite dissenters who have joined with some Lamanites. And then they began to stir things up. And then we have the Gideons and robbers. And it doesn't matter that they almost died of a famine a few years earlier. Things were better now. And they wanted to gain power. And they did. And they'll, uh, they will do anything to get it. Right? So we can see in these verses that it was that they started to get really large and powerful. And just in a matter of two years, they had grown so powerful that the Nephite army couldn't even control them. So they tried, but they ended up going back home. And these robbers went around and caused all kinds of problems and havoc. And um, at first, the evil was, that was coming upon them stirred the people up in remembrance of the Lord their God. But that, didn't, but that didn't last. The next year, they began to forget again. Then the year following, they began to wax strong in iniquity. So it's just kind of nine years after the famine, they were back to their old ways. Uh, you know, really though. So what have we learned thus far? Okay, so we have a quote here from President, or just kidding, that's in for Helaman chapter 12. Never mind. <clears throat> we'll let that be Helaman chapter 12. Okay, so we have our read it, live it. I think we will have one for today. Let me just check. Okay, we have one. Here's the read it, live it. I don't even know if you can see see it at all okay but it says nephi could have sought revenge against the multitude who tried to throw him in prison oh yeah remember that but instead he begs god to try again and he knows the character of god so yeah that's pretty awesome it's true i never even realized that nephi could have easily been like no nah, y'all's are gonna get destroyed right now by by god um, and he did it and he chose to do a famine instead, but then it seems like nine years later, it's still the same. And then, so the challenge here is to believe in a God of second chances. Hmm. I love that. I wonder what's going to happen now though, because they got their second chance and then they wasted it. And now, now there's like so many things going on again with the robbers. So we're going to be reading Helaman chapter 12 tomorrow. So until then, stay strong, warrior.